Like the, tune, the big yeah. tune when the piano does and it, you've got the, 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 the yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When you like pull it back and you're just like da da, and then you carry on da da. It's just so like that feeling is just so much. Hi everyone, I'm Lotta. This is Rihanna, and we're going to be interviewing our conductor, Sean Edwards. Hi, how are you? Hello, great to be here, and really nice to have this opportunity to talk with you. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to know how did you get into orchestral music? I I was incredibly lucky, you know, I was growing up in the 70s and there was a brief period when the UK government actually funded music lessons for everybody. Now I know that um, in Britain there are some schools, some state schools that have music as their kind of beacon subject and everybody can learn music and the orchestra are actually going to go, the National Youth Orchestra are going to go and work with one of these wonderful schools in Islington um, quite soon. And that's great, but when I was growing up, every school had op that opportunity. So I started out, um, I'm from rural Sussex, and I was in a small primary school that had a broken tambourine and a couple of triangles, and we used to sing horrible sort of community songs that didn't mean anything to a child. But when I went to secondary school, my dad got a job in the South Midlands, and we lived outside Oxford, and I went to a school in Oxford that had all these instruments. And I guess, I don't know why it is, I'd started playing the piano when I was a kid, but um, I wanted to learn the French horn, and they said, okay, here's a horn, get going. And so uh, there were two years of, this sounds awful, and I don't know how to do this, um, and with quite a strict teacher actually, but then um, when I was just 13, I was asked if I'd like to go and play in the local youth orchestra, sort of second orchestra, and I did. Um, and it was just love at first bite of the music. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, playing in then youth orchestras, you know, all my teenage years was, was just a brilliant thing. And I think also because um, I went to an all girls school and the idea that you could meet boys and other people, you know, a wider range of people than just in my school um, was also a big part of it, the social side. And I think that's a really important thing about making music anyway. Mm, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So, um, you mentioned about like, playing the French horn and stuff like that. What made you like decide that you wanted to do conducting? I think it wasn't really um, a conscious decision. It was one of those things, and you probably also have this, where you're working in a group of people and part of the orchestra, for example, needs a bit more time to sort something out. And it used to be, oh, Sean, could you go and run through something with the winds? while the main conductor worked with the strings a bit more um, and I do that because I guess on the horn you aren't playing all the time mm -hmm. um, so you're able to listen to what's going on and you're interested in what's happening in the rows of people sitting in front of you um, so it started off doing things like that and then I had some wonderful friends who were probably a couple of years um, ahead of me um, who used to put on their own concerts just outside Oxford, there's a very nice uh, small town, Wantage, and um, they used to get me to come over and, and play the horn in their concerts. And it was great, because they could just, like on a Saturday, the school was open, they'd go and use some of the classrooms and practice stuff and have good ideas about what to put on, and we'd play in these. I'm sure they were complete shambles, you know, but their mum and dad would make food for everybody, and I remember staying, you know, sleeping on the floor in their house um, <laughs> on the Saturday night and do the concert on the Sunday and then you're back at school on Monday morning. Uh, but that was great and so I started then um, sort of reciprocally to do things um, where I was living and uh, getting friends from these orchestras that I was playing. Because that's the other thing, isn't it? When you're, when you're playing in an orchestra, you start to make a network of friends that are not just the people you're at school with. Yeah. And um, they, they come from all different areas of wherever you're living and not just necessarily the town or village where you are. Um, and so then, yeah, getting people together from lots of different um, areas to come and play small concerts where I was living, and my mum making all the sandwiches then for everybody and, and, and really enjoying that. Um, and then when I went to music college, um, it got a bit more serious. I'd, I'd done that thing of, um, in a way, doing too much too soon, maybe on the horn. I'd started forcing things a bit. I had to go back and bit like you know going back onto open strings I had to do lots of sort of long notes and realign my technical side and of course that's really tough to do 
So I got some friends that I was beginning to get in touch with um, at the music college together and started doing things with them. Um, but all this time I wasn't really thinking, I'm a conductor, I'm a conductor. I was thinking, I just need to do music. Let me do music. I, I want to be involved with people and, and make music. Um, and it wasn't until much later when I got a scholarship to study conducting formally. The conducting sort of bug really got hold of me, I guess. Um, and then I studied as a postgrad that I began to feel like, okay, maybe now I can start to think, perhaps, you know, I'm going to be a conductor rather than a player. So it was a very slow developmental process, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Um, we also wanted to ask what your experience has been like as a female conductor in like a very male-dominated Im industry and like any difficulties you want to share and also like any advice you have for like female and non-binary aspiring conductors and musicians. Absolutely. So, um, I think going on from what I was just saying, that my own development was very much uh, a sort of organic process of just wanting to do music. The conductors, when I was growing up, were these, you know, the Bernstein and Carrier were the two big figures, basically. And how can you as a, a young person, you know, think of yourself as this sort of white-haired, very autocratic kind of uh, conductor, you know, who basically own an orchestra and... Um, you know, everything to do with how they're going to work. Um, having said that though, there were two other people, Simon Rattle and Seiji Ozawa. Simon Rattle um, particularly uh, doing things as a very young conductor, recognised being fabulously talented. Um, and that idea that uh, you could be um, full of enthusiasm to do things and it didn't necessarily have to have an experience that you could, you know, go there and be young and be yourself as well, because there was Simon, you know, not being the a very um, a sort of autocratic person, but really much more collaborative with the musicians. And I think that model that he inspired is something that's developing more and more, actually. So um, for young conductors now, I would say, or well, people who want to go into conducting, it's the music that is probably driving you. And that's, that's all that matters, actually, is that you want to do music and you want to do the music and share it with other people. Mm -hmm. um, and I think when you look at it like that, uh, then it's much more about enabling um, and sharing with other people musical ideas, energy, uh, you know, creativity perhaps, and that it's a much more um, collaborative process then it doesn't matter what gender or not gender you are or any, anything else, um, how you identify. It's much more to do with how you're going to communicate with the players. Mm -hmm. And I think musicians themselves now are, are also much more diverse, which is great, isn't it? That um, when you look at an orchestra now, um, even the most perhaps uh, staid professional ones, you know, they've got a range of people in them. And they're also much more welcoming than they used to be. So um, I, I was really pleased the other day, I was on a conducting competition um, jury, which is a pretty weird thing to do actually, where you're there, you know, listening to lots and lots of young or youngish conductors coming. This is with the London Symphony Orchestra. And um, again, there were a real range of people, range of ages, range of styles and types. And there was one person who was magnificently non-binary, by which I mean they had fantastic clothes on, um, very, very tall, slender person with uh, long hair, um, bright red trousers with decorations around the, uh, the bottoms. So very unlike you might think what a sort of stuffy orchestra might look like. But the orchestra loved it. They were completely welcoming, you know, and this person was lovely and musical and, um, you know, it, it, it just showed me that now I think there's so much more uh, welcoming um, and in sort of embracing of every every kind of person. Not least because, of course, if you're playing classical music, it's quite a niche thing in itself, isn't it? So um, you know the fact that it, it we're all actually a bit sort of unusual, if you like, in in doing this very intense but very concentrated um, and and slightly unusual pursuit. It, it it's good. I think that with my generation, there is a lot of change coming with that respect, and especially on NYO, which is, su which is such a welcoming 
community and is so um kind of just feels like home for me and and other people as well who I've spoken to I think something that's really special about MIO for me is that I can be myself and, and it feels like I'm appreciated for that rather than excluded where I might be in other situations so even though um the whole industry as a, as a whole is kind of can be quite exclusive you know especially in terms of class and race and stuff as well um I think that there is a lot of change coming in that with with young people. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd like to say, I think that you are the driving force for, you know, so much of what's going to open now. And I think the, I think the doors, if you like, are ready to be pushed, you know, and they will swing open, actually. I think um, there's so much now coming from, uh, if you like, up from the, the grassroots of uh, people growing up now and you know what you all feel is the right and just way to treat people for example yeah. um, and, and I think music classical music particularly is a funny thing because you know the very fact we call our music colleges conservatoires this idea that you're going to conserve a way of playing and hand it down from generation to generation um, so there is this sort of small c conservatism because we're looking at these pages of music with little black dots on white paper and what does that mean unless it's live and actually unless you're playing and you know sharing that with somebody and somebody who's perhaps younger than you going um, oh that's what that that line means there or that's how we're going to play this or you know that's what Chopin meant when you know it's, it, it's so it's it's actually um, trying to decode something that quite often comes from centuries ago um, and then sharing it in a way that's alive still. The theme of this August, like this residency is like open up, let loose, that sort of thing, and we've got a wide variety of repertoire. How did you go about like interpreting that and like delivering it? Yeah, well, the first thing was a conversation with Sarah Alexander, actually, the um, artistic and general director here, and she said, well, what are we going to do? And I felt at the time that, um, you know, after you'd done this wonderful thing in the summer of hope, and being incredibly creative about what that might feel like and look like, sort of looking forwards. Um, it just felt that by the time we got to now, it was like, we need to kind of be able to do that. Um, and so we found music that really does that, actually. Uh, so I think all the pieces that we're doing have this sense of people being in a very structured environment that then explodes into something bigger than itself. Which, of course, is what any great piece of music does anyway, you know, in whatever genre you're talking about. Um, but I think we've chosen pieces that, especially um, combined with the dance elements, really have that physicality about them. Um, and it's really exciting to work with you as players um, who have that fit natural physicality and, you know, haven't been told yet that you've got to sit still and play, you know, but that you can move around and, and actually have something that's... Um, wonderfully liberating when we get to those big moments so it's very yeah, exciting. I think especially in the in the string parts as well and like in the Ravel we've in our section also been talking about the kind of actual physical choreography of it because there's so much because it goes so fast as yes, well yes and there's so much um kind of bow distribution stuff that we've had to talk about and um you know quick like pits to arco and stuff like that all of it is just very um um, but but then you know once you get it and it kind of becomes like muscle memory and second nature. The music is so enjoyable and it's yeah. so fun to play and is so physically active and, and physically demanding. I think that's that's really great and you know really Absolutely. part of the, the let loose thing. Um, is there any anything kind of like non musical that you like to do? Maybe like another hobby or something that helps you let loose. Yeah. Uh, well, um, I guess you know the funny thing is. Um, I think if anyone had asked me when I was 17 um, about you know, careers advice and, uh, um, and actually said to me, you realise if you're going to be working in music that you're probably going to be working in city centres you know, most of the time in concert halls. Um, obviously we're here in Warwick, which is a gorgeous campus university and I love the fact that where I'm staying, if I walk up, I'm going to pass this uh, small lake with swans on it and a uh, little coots walking on the grass and so I love being out in nature and actually it's that funny sort of dilemma of um, yeah being in 
very uh, sort of concentrated city centres a lot of the time. And also when I'm working as a guest conductor, you know, staying in a lot of hotels and uh, being in that sort of metropolis sense, um, because you need to be where people are, obviously. Um, but it's wonderful, therefore, when I can get out and I live in the south of England and when I can walk on the South Downs and when I can, yeah, um, be with animals, I, I love it. And that, that's one of the things that I miss enormously. I, I was just talking to um, my wonderful colleague Lee here last night and we were both saying, we want to have dogs, but we can't because we're too much, you know, on the road and we can't take care of them properly. But what about you? Dogs, cats, animals, are you into uh, country life or are you dying to get into the cities and have that sort of more... Um, Do you yeah, um, I really quite like the countryside. I just, I don't know, because I feel like sometimes in cities it's a quite busy. Um, sometimes I'm a bit like, ooh, it's really busy, a bit crowded. But then like in the country life it's just like, a, I don't know. It's so liberating. It's like opening up itself, yeah, and then, yeah. like the whole theme, right? And then there's, um, I guess, the air is just so much nicer sometimes yeah. as well. And then yeah. it just feels so much nicer. And then I guess sometimes walking around because I do some composing myself. Huh? So um, I when I when I had like a brick wall, a mental um, a mental wall, I would like walk around, maybe like walk around some garden, just like listen to like some nature stuff, and it's just so nice. It's so nice to like help your creativity going as well. But Rihanna, can I ask you, what's it like playing the piano and, or Celeste in the orchestra? Because mm -hmm. um, as a conductor, there I am, you know, miles away from you, right at the... Because obviously the piano is big and it can't be right in the middle of the orchestra. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, t tell me how you're feeling about being there and, you know, obviously you've got a major amount to play. Yeah, it's, um, it's different. Um, because it's my first time in an in in like orchestral setting to play the piano. Normally I'm a solo pianist or I do small ensemble work with maybe one other piano. And I have to constantly look up. I feel like it's that connection between like the conductor and the pianist. Um, my tutor, she was incredibly helpful. She's like, you have to constantly look up. You have to like half memorise the entire piece and then go make eye contact. And um, that is, I mean, in the beginning I found that really difficult. But then the more I did it, the more I'm like, oh, I can like, I'm getting used to it. Um, and it's more like I have to listen to everyone else too, because in the rock in the um, in the it, it's like the after the saxophone solo, like the big tune, the, the yeah. big tune when the piano does the, 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 the yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, there's like a bit where like, you pull it around quite a bit, and <laughs> me and um, the other pianist Eliza, we were um playing it and I was like playing the tune, she would play the piano part and we'll swap and then like we'll pull the tempo around a bit as well just to get used to that like looking and it's just really quite nice like when you like pull it back and you're just like da da and then you carry on da da it's just so like that feeling is just so much. Oh I'm so it's happy like, to hear that because um, it's quite hard when the strings are in full flood actually mm -hmm. all around me to hear exactly where you are with your mm -hmm. semi quavers. Um, so I, I was hoping that it felt okay and comfortable for you because mm -hmm. of course you've got this really difficult thing like the percussionists that you press the key and the sound comes instantly yeah. whereas Lotta will talk about how they can go you know and the sound doesn't come immediately and you're having to somehow guess aren't you or judge mm -hmm. you know where to actually play so you're not early um, it's a it's a really tricky thing but yeah, I'm yeah. You're enjoying it. yeah it's quite nice because um, Again, my teacher said like you have to act like you're maybe a wind player or a yes. string player. There's always that sort of like delay. Um, so maybe a string is like just how it sounds. Like you have to press down a bit more. I mean, I'm not a string player myself, yeah. but um, <laughs> <laughs> but like I, I play the flute, so like you have to like oh, breathe, and then yes. there's like some and there's some sort of resistance with yeah. what you play. Um, we have to like sort of account for that when we're playing yeah. the piano because when you press, it's like. Yeah, yeah, the exactly. instant it comes out, so yeah. there is that sort of, but then I guess maybe I also play the flute, so that's I sort of have some sort of awareness about that sort of thing. Yeah, because I think that's another thing that's so interesting in, in working in any orchestra and with any piece of music is where is the lead and then where are we, you know, who are we listening to to follow and, you know, for, for conductors it's the same actually, you know, some of the time I know that I've got to actually be giving the shape. Um, and taking us over a, a sort of, um, you know, end of phrase into something else. But then at another time, actually, um, it's very much listening to the motor rhythms or something that you've got or that you're starting us off with the next bit of energy or, you know, the violins have got something that they need time to just sort of go over the beautiful, you know, end of a phrase into something else. 
and uh, so it's that it's very interesting dialogue all the time, isn't it? And then dialogue between Haiti people actually, which is so interesting yeah. as well. Yeah, and so fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, it's great. I think I think playing as a section as well is one of the, the hardest things about being yeah. a string player is because you know not only do we have to stay with all the other parts, we have to stay with each other, and that's a lot of what we spend our time kind of thinking about and, and working yeah. on in sectionals as well. Really like changing the bow at exactly the same time, um, stuff like that. Um, to, to finish off then, um, what would you say is your, your favourite thing about the repertoire, or your, maybe your favourite bit of the repertoire? Oh gosh, I, you, you know, it's always that question, um, and as a conductor I think um, it's that moment that you realise, you know, in every piece that there's something that you're really sort of searching for and, and aiming for. So um, in the Rachmaninoff, there's the, all the exuberant bits, which are wonderful, but they are exuberant because they come out of this incredibly sort of dark, tense, quite internal life and, um, you know, then, then have this sort of power to sort of open up. Um, and the Ravel's a little bit like that as well, isn't it? It's almost like it's submerged at first and then um, the music comes and you get this wild dancing and that's fabulous, I love it. Um, but then in the Danny Howard piece uh, that I'm doing with you as well, it's very interesting talking about being submerged because there's a bit where she says it's got to sound like it's underwater um, and it's sort of burbling. And she's also great at writing combinations that um, have a real sense of opening out and um, uh, a sort of release of sound, even though in her music the release is a little bit more gentle, it isn't a kind of wild dancing, it's more like a, and now we're going to arrive, and this is wonderful. Um, so yeah, I think all the pieces have got something like that, um, which I, I like enormously. So yeah, it's that build up with the orchestra from something that's got, you know, tremendous sort of harmonic and, and rhythmic tension to something that then allows itself to sort of get out and, and release and for me physically as well it's really lovely to do that cool great well it's been really lovely to talk to you mm -hmm. um, thank you both thank it's you really so really thank nice you. to talk to you more and it's great yeah, yeah. so thank you yeah. thank you <laughs> <laughs>